All right, everybody, we are here with Raymond Ashley, AKA Ray, okay? If you've been hearing about Ray in F3, the new uranium discovery, the one stock in uranium land that everybody's been talking about, this is the man, this is the guy really in charge of the exploration program. Ray, welcome to the show. Thank you, Fabi. I appreciate that uh, introduction. I have to start by saying to you, it's it's I I work with an, a phenomenal team of geoscientists. Discoveries like this don't get made by one person, and so it's a team of people. It's a geologist. It's the drillers. Uh, it's it's everybody together that does this. But thank you. No problem, absolutely. And then uh, I was actually sitting in the room when you were at Red Cloud, just the pre uh, pre PDAC Red Cloud. And you were giving an explanation as to what you guys had done so far. And that included, you know, the the bonanza hit a hole. I don't know what you call it personally, but, you know, that's that's what I call it personally. It was, I think, one meter of 59 yeah, percent. Exactly uh, yeah, you threw yeah. it at 59.2, something like that. And uh, obviously that is like jaw dropping. That is not the norm. And it usually um, is just a piece of the puzzle, right? Uh, you can't make a deposit with just one hole, but also the one hole with really high grade. It tells you something, right? It tells you that you might be on the track of something very interesting. So Ray, I'd like to jump in and, and just ask you straight up because you've just come out with news, right? Um, about some very interesting scintillometer readings that appear to be uh, off scale, you know, three point something meters off scale, which is great. And you have that that really juicy hole to begin with. Now you guys are running scintillometers on, you know, the different holes and you're finding out more stuff about the deposit or should we even call it the deposit? We'll get into that later. What do we know now about this property that we didn't know before? Okay. Okay, Fabi, you're right. The discovery hole was a phenomenal hole. And uh, what it had, a, it was wide mineralization, which is important. And then the fact that there's a high grade core to it, and you're describing what we, the, the meter of 59% uranium, we call it ultra high grade core. Um, that carries a lot of the uranium. A lot of the grade comes from that core. So what's, first of all, what was what's significant about that is to me, it demonstrates that the fluids that, that hydrothermal th fluids that traveled through that shear zone uh, and the processes that resulted in the precipitation of this uranium, you know, led to super high grades. That is right there significant in itself. Okay. And, and what? It's in that Southwest part of the Athabasca Basin. That's where Triple R, 25 kilometers northwest of Triple R and Arrow, those deposits also are sim have similarly high, very high grades in parts of them. It's just, that's all the first hole told us. You speak then to the fact that we just put out another news release. Yes. And what is the main points of the news release that was the, which described our 21 hold winter program. Okay. And what are the main points? Well, one of the main points is that we intersected 60 meters south of the discovery hole. We intersected the zone and it had, instead of one meter of off-scale radioactivity, that after assaying was that ultra high grade 59%, in the hole 60 meters to the south, there's almost four meters of off-scale and the entire like the entire four meters is off scale. Now, we don't know if that will translate into 60% uranium. It's going to be- But it's going to be something. It's a high percentage. Right. right? It's likely like it's going 10%. to be- Exactly. Okay. And so <laughs> That's the, what we're trying the to get significance at. is that it's wider. So the, what we've learned is that as we're marching south, which was the direction, we followed the direction of the geologists working together. There's, you know, five main geologists that- discuss all of all of these holes and how they get done. Eric, Ben, Sam, me, Tony, like we're, we, we work on how do we follow the direction of, of strongest mineralization and continuous strong mineralization. That was our goal to be to be disciplined in following that and, and ultimately to follow that high grade course. So what did we do? We were able to show that it does continue. It is continuous to at least 60 meters away. And the last 
and, and eat it and with with strength. And that has to be confirmed with the assays, but the the, the scintillometer counts tell us that the high grade core is there and a very significant that far away. The last two holes of the program, the second last hole stepped another 15 meters south, and that the last hole stepped a further 15 meters south, that that to, to section line 90 south. And that's with with off-scale radioactivity in, in those two holes as well. So we we know that the 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 mineralization is is continuing to be strong and wide with a high grade core uh, and now extending that far south 90 meters south of the discovery hole we have it to the north as well but it was it was stronger to the south so that's one of the significant you know, those are the two things we've grown the this mineralization in length uh stepping out in 15 meter step outs which is the total usual thing to do with these types of deposits and uh and we've confirmed that the high grades this ultra high grade core and wide mineralization continues to the south as well so it's open to the south and uh for now it's open in every direction really mostly to the south because that's where it's strongest so that's what it makes sense to continue to follow that's how we're growing the size of this discovery, this zone. And it, yeah, it's getting close to being able to be called, I would be comfortable today to call it a deposit. The, the question is how big is it? And that can only be determined by continuing to drill. Um, it takes hundreds of drill holes to fully define these kinds of deposits. They, they uh, change, with, uh, they change, the grade is, is changes rapidly along strike. And that's the reason that they're drilled with such, with section lines that are so close together is because the great, and, and you know, they're, and they're not simple to follow. And that's the other reason. So, you know, it's been exceedingly successful to keep following this thing. We've managed to continue to grow it. And that is really what we have to continue doing in the, you know, in the next program and, and to ultimately find out just how big this thing is. And it's certainly got potential. Good stuff. Yeah, well, that's what we're here for, right? The potential, because what has been found is already so exciting. Uh, but that at the end of the day, investors always want more, right? There is an infinite hunger for more and more and more and more problems in the ground. How big could this be and how high grade this could be? So uh, I guess speaking to the potential of the deposit, and obviously this this is all uh, guesswork and planning and trying to do you know the, the very best work that we can. Is the idea now to only focus on drilling south? Is it going to be um, you know purely drilling? Do you guys need to do any sort of more preliminary work in the area to figure out where where else to drill? What what is your idea regarding that? The main thing here is that there's a, a shear zone now that we call the A1 main shear zone. And the mineralization is hosted in, in that shear zone. And really, what we're following so far, the JR zone, is a lens of mineralization that is about 25 meters below the unconformity, which is the top of the basement rocks. And, it's, and that is what we're following, a lens of mineralization. Um, we have drilled below it, not a lot. And it seemed to get weaker as we drilled below it. And as I said, our goal so far was to follow the, the highest grade, continuous grade zone. What, and, and that's what we've done. Where it's the potential is that that continues. So with that we continue to find this lens as it's not cut off. There is a hole on line 30 north that did not hit mineralization, but that does not say that it's cut off to the north. We have section lines, which you can see where holes above the zone also have no radioactivity. And then at the second hole on that same section hit the high grade zone. So it isn't cut off in any direction yet. And certainly that lens will continue to try and expand to the south. There could be, uh, and, and that one drill will continue to focus on that. It isn't clear you know, that, how big that is. And it makes sense to continue to follow that. There could be the potential for other lenses, other mineralization, deeper down, further down in that structure. That's something that my idea would be to have a second drill in the next summer program that would be focusing on some of these 
the potential for other zones of mineralization as we grow the JR zone that we've discovered. I'd say the greatest potential would be for there to be mineralization at the unconformity. You know, if I give you an example, ISO's hurricane deposit is only at the unconformity. And the unconformity being the plane between the bottom of the sandstone and the top of the nice granitic gneiss, the, the basement rocks. That plane is, is, is where all of the hurricane deposit is located. Our lens is only, you know, vertically, maybe 20, about 25 meters below the unconformity. So there is certainly the potential that there's mineralization at the unconformity in somewhere close to the JR zone, the lens that we've found so far. Now, the, the trick is we don't want to randomly test the unconformity. The idea will be to compile all of our data. We have mineralization on, you know, from section line 15 north to 90 south. We'll be looking at all that to try and find a good target for possible mineralization at the unconformity. So there's that and the possibility for lenses deeper down in the shear zone. Uh, those are things, and, and really the possibility that to the east of the main shear zone that we found, there's only one so far, but there is the potential that to the east, and we have drilled holes that show there's not, there isn't one close to the A1 main shear zone, but further, slightly further east, we, the idea to me would be to drill a deeper hole to, to confirm there's not another shear zone to the east of what we found. Those three things are things that I would want to have a second drill, you know, doing exploration as we grow the JR zone. You got to remember the conductor is identified the shear zone for us and provided the target. And it, be, it was conductive because of the graphite and sulfide, sulfides within the shear zone. So now we know, and we've drilled the shear zone over the entire length of this three and a half kilometer long shear zone. You know, there's potential back even along the entire that entire shear zone. We've drilled holes there before, but as I've mentioned, the holes could easily be below mineralization that could be there as well. The entire shear zone has potential to host additional high-grade uranium mineralization. So that's in our minds and as part of exploration that we need to do. We have proof now that there's really nice high-grade uranium mineralization with some continuity to it at the JR zone. It makes the entire conductor perspective we're keeping that in our minds as exploration targets for the upcoming program. That sounds like the most fun treasure hunt <laughs> I've ever heard of. <laughs> well, you said it. That's what we are, treasure hunters. <laughs> That's it. And when you find stuff, it's even better. So you there just mentioned is. ISO Energy, which I guess uh, has been one of the more recent uranium companies to find a you know high grade deposit in the Athabasca Basin. I've been hearing a lot of chatter on Twitter and, and lots of uh, theorizing around what the JR zone could look like for, for this company for F3. What do we know so far from you know the, the drill results and everything that could maybe give us a clue into comparisons, right? Is this anything like ISO? Is this anything like Aero? Is this anything like Cigar Lake? Like, do we even know enough so far to start making those comparisons? Fabi, it, it is early days, okay, for the JR zone. Those other deposits that you mentioned have hundreds of drill holes into them that took many years to define to understand the size potential of those deposits. We're, you know, just a few months in, we've drilled uh, 26 holes into the JR zone. So it's exceedingly early days. So in that sense, we know we have width, we know we have high grade, a high grade core. We know that it's, it's shallow, all those things we know. Um, there's potential because we're close to the unconformity for other zones of uranium nearby. And there's a whole ex a conductor, uh, a shear zone that has potential given what we've discovered. Now to compare them yet to those other deposits, I'd say is early. I will say that the ultra high grade core is an important thing, as I mentioned, and that it's open in all directions is also really important. The drilling we have done is so far below the level of where the elevation of where the J zone mineralization has been found in most of that 
not all of the drill holes along the conductor that we've drilled since 2014. We drilled in 2014, 2019, but certainly there's great potential there for us to keep growing it. Yeah, and hopefully it will turn into something with enough size to, to soon be, you know, to be called a, a deposit that we can, you know, be uh, thinking about a resource estimate, putting out sure. a resource estimate. I hope we get there, okay? Yes. We just have to, you know, we're it's, it's early days. That's what I have to tell you. We don't know how big this is. The mm -hmm. signs are that it has size potential. You know, what are some of those signs? Well, if I tell you, we drilled on this conductor starting from the south end in 2014. We got in 2014 to hole 19, hit a sniff of uranium, like a sniff being half a meter of 0 0.04 wow. something percent That's uranium. So it's a real, mm -hmm. it's barely anything. But the experienced geoscientists that I'm lucky to work with recognize that the signs in this sure zone that had them telling me we need to keep going back there. That has all the right signs to host high-grade uranium mineralization. So 2019, we went back and drilled many holes around that sniff, several holes around that sniff of uranium without finding anything. But still the signs look nice and still we're dogs with a bone and we're going back and getting motivating to get exploration budgets because we think there's potential there. Now, we saw by reviewing everything that the signs and the this, all the signs got better going towards the north. That's why we defined the untested northern 900 meters of the conductor and drilled, a, it's like the third hole of that fall program, stepped out, how far? 730 meters to the north and really very close to the north end of the A1 conductor, which we think is, will define the north end of the A1, of the A1 main shear zone. That's not proven, but that's what we think. Okay, so that's a 730 meter step out that hit the discovery hole. And now we're marching back towards the sniff of uranium with all the signs of large volumes of hydrothermal fluid. So, you know, there's certainly a lot of potential, at least back to that hole 1419 that we drilled, you know, in 2014. And like I'm saying, conceivably, there's, there's to me, there's still a lot of potential now, you know, that right, the geologists that advised me and that we worked together, right? They were they, they got it right. Um, that's why I'm so grateful to work with you know a team of people. We've been doing this together in the basin for a lot of years now. We've had we've been lucky to be around the J zone discovery, the triple R fission uraniums, triple R discovery. We've you know that's where the experience comes from and passion. We're passionate about this, and uh, you know, that. and we. <laughs> We're persistent, right? And we trust ourselves. And yes, we're lucky. I mean, the universe shone down on us, right? And there's a, lo there's a lot of good people that do this. If I tell you about the drilling, if you look at our maps, you'll see that the drill holes on these 15 meter section lines, they're close together. The drill holes are very straight. And in difficult drilling conditions like that, there's 120 meters vertically of of overburden that's very difficult to drill and normally holes deviate in that and they the holes would have been all crossing themselves which makes it very difficult to to know where you are and to expand a zone and if you look at our maps the holes are very very straight that's because we brought in the sonic drill and you know it's and and then the diamond drillers are people we've worked with bryson and bort longyear we've worked with for decades right for a long time and yeah, it's, they're a part of it too, right? It's all of the people involved in the work and doing you know, good work. That's how we can go forward as rapidly as we have so far, right? I mean, we've grown it. I'm really happy with the speed at which we've managed to do this. Yeah, geoscientists that have been around this Athabasca uranium for, for many years. And so then I'm lucky to work with guys like that. I was going to say the team is worth their weight in gold, but I think they're worth their weight in high-grade uranium. I think it, it suits <laughs> better. Raymond, thank you so much for uh, coming here and uh, uh, shining some light onto you know where we are with this discovery and what we can expect moving forward. Um, I'm really grateful for your work and also for the fact that you guys have been really persistent. Just like you said, yeah. you know that little sniff of uranium could have been easily uh, forgotten about or ignored. Uh, but you guys have the experience to to understand that 
you know, when there's uranium, there are certain markers around it that Perfect. tell you that you might be getting closer. And so good job for, you know, sticking to it. And congratulations. I hope to speak to you soon about uh, possibly the assay results that are coming from the uh, amazing, amazing uh, holes that you guys have hit so yeah. far. Thanks, Fabi. Look, and, and you know, thanks to Sam and Eric and Ben and Tony and Bryson and Longyear and all the people out there. Uh, who who stay you know are away from their families and are working and doing their part and everybody has a part in something like this and I'm grateful to all of them we don't these kinds of this kind of success doesn't happen without a team a whole team of people and so Absolutely. yeah we I, I'm grateful and it let's hope it keeps going Fabi let, let's hope I can see you smile some more because every time you're giving a presentation, you're smiling. I know there's something good coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks Patty. very much, Ray. Take care. See you soon. You too.